There's a carnival coming to town and I'm ready for it. Now I love carnival rides, so I've saved up my money so I can ride all day. The rides at the carnival cost $2 a piece. That means if I ride 10 rides, it will cost $20. If I ride 15 rides, it'll cost $30. Now I can take this information, change it into ordered pairs, plot these pairs as points on a graph, and connect them to form a line. Now that line represents the possible cost of my trip to the carnival based upon the number of rides at $2 a ride. That line would be different if rides were $3 a piece. 10 rides would be $30, and 15 rides would be $45. We can put those points on the graph and get a different line. Notice that the difference between the two lines is how steep they appear. The rate of change of the first line is two, because the cost was $2 per ride. The rate of change of the second line was greater. It was three, because the cost was $3 per ride. The greater rate of change is demonstrated by the greater steepness of the second line. The idea of the steepness of lines has a mathematical representation called slope. Slope is a number which describes the steepness of a line. That number is actually a ratio comparing the change in the y-coordinates and the change in the x-coordinates. Here's what I mean. Here are the original ordered pairs and the graph formed by those points. We'll take the difference of the y-coordinates, 30 minus 20, and the difference of the x-coordinates, 15 minus 10. That's 10 over 5, which is 2. The slope of the line is 2. Remember, we said the rate of change in this situation was 2, and now we see that the slope is 2. The slope represents the rate of change. So the slope was the change in y over the change in x, sometimes expressed with this notation. Now, if that's Greek to you, you're right on top of it because that is the Greek letter delta, which mathematicians use to indicate change. The slope is sometimes expressed as delta y over delta x. When we calculated the slope of this line, we subtracted the y terms and subtracted the x terms. If we wanted to make this more general, we could rename the points. I'll call the first point x1, y1. That's the x with what we call a subscripted 1, a little smaller and below the letter. And it's simply read x1, y1. We'll call the other point x2, y2. When we find the slope, we subtract and express the difference of the y terms, in this case, as y2 minus y1, and we put that over the difference of the x terms, x2 minus x1. So, if you know the coordinates of two points on a line, you can use this formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, to find the slope. By the way, doesn't matter which point you call x1, y1, and which point you call x2, y2. Now, this formula is an algebraic method for finding the slope. However, you can use the graph itself to help you find the slope. By counting the horizontal and vertical paths that go from one point on the line to another, you can arrive at the slope. The vertical distance, which is really the difference of the y terms, is called the rise. In this case, from 20 to 30 is 10, so the rise is 10. The horizontal distance is called the run. In this case, from 10 to 15, that's five. So the run is five. By putting the rise over the run, you can arrive at the slope. 10 over five is two. The slope is two. The rise over the run. Just one more way of expressing the slope. Well, here we are at the carnival. Now I'm standing in front of the Flying Bob. Now this is a great ride because it demonstrates the two most common kinds of slopes you'll come across when you're graphing lines. 
and it's fast too. On this side of the ride, you go up as you're going from left to right. This is just like a line with a positive slope. If you run to the right, the rise goes up and the slope is positive. On this side of the ride, you're going down as you go from left to right. This is just like a line with a negative slope. If you run to the right, the rise actually goes down. It's kind of like a, a negative rise, and the slope is negative. Every line isn't diagonal. This ride is like a horizontal line. And this ride is kind of a big zero, which is OK, because the slope of a horizontal line is zero. You see, the y coordinates are all the same. And, and when you subtract them, you get zero. And zero over anything is zero. So the slope of a horizontal line is always zero. Now, this is more like it. This is called the super shot. And it's not a diagonal line or a horizontal line. This is a vertical line. Now, a vertical line has x coordinates that are the same. So when you subtract them, you get zero. But now the zero is in the denominator. And a zero in the denominator of a fraction makes it undefined. Therefore, the slope of a vertical line is undefined. Or you might say that a vertical line has no slope! Oh! Woo! <laughs> so, slope represents the rate of change and the slope of a line tells you about its steepness. It can be expressed as the change in y over the change in x, sometimes written as delta y over delta x. As a formula, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which can also be found by the rise over the run. A line with a positive slope rises from left to right, and a line with a negative slope falls from left to right. A horizontal line has a slope of zero, but a vertical line has no slope or a slope that's undefined. Now that you've got a new slant on slope, you'll be more inclined to get a better grade when you graph. Hold on tight.